So when many of us think of Kamino, we are thinking of Topoka City, the capital of that watery world. Topoka City was the center of Kamino's government and the center of their cloning operation, so I figure today we'll take a look at the design and history of the city itself. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So Topoka City was the center of Kamino's cloning operations and basically the face of Kamino that we see not just in the movies, but in the Clone Wars TV show and the Bad Batch as well. It's a massive city sprawling over 150 square kilometers, consisting of innumerable structures that are raised above the choppy waters of Kamino's seas on stilts. Within the halls of these structures were white sterile walls that were visually appealing to the Kaminoans who designed and lived in these structures. And this seemingly sterile environment was the perfect environment to start a major cloning program. The Kaminoans were expert cloners, and cities like Topoka City were home to very large cloning facilities. The cloning facilities in Topoka City most famously constructed the Grand Army of the Republic for the Republic during the Clone Wars. The first time we see Topoka City is during Attack of the Clones. Obi-Wan is sent there while following the bounty hunter responsible for the attempted assassination of Padme Amidala, and discovers the clone army being constructed for the Republic. Well, there we get our first on-screen look at the Kaminoans, the species that inhabit Topoka City. And a look at their remarkably advanced and capable cloning program, which at this point has built most of an army for the Galactic Republic. With the start of the Clone Wars, Topoka City became the center of attention for the Separatists. After all, it was the home for the entire clone army. Attacking this would seriously cripple the Republic's ability to continue fighting a war. With Kamino, and more specifically Topoka City, out of action, the Republic would have a hard time breeding new troops. So, understandably, the city became a key target for Separatist attack. And on several occasions, the Separatists made an attempt to disable, conquer, or destroy Topoka City. But none were as infamous as the Battle of Kamino, where Separatist forces attempted to not destroy, but seriously damage the facility in a manner that would knock it out for the rest of the war. Now, that Separatist attack was very interestingly crafted, using a decoy fleet in orbit to sneak forces onto the surface, mostly under the water, and then carry out an attack from underneath, since the city is entirely constructed over a vast ocean. But luckily for the Republic, this Separatist attack was not successful in achieving any of their strategic objectives, and the Separatists were not able to really significantly damage the cloning facilities or steal genetic material. With the cloning facilities safe, it continued to be a key training ground for the clones serving in the Grand Army of the Republic. During their early years on Kamino, clones bred there would be trained in combat techniques to improve their fighting abilities, and some clones would receive tactical and strategic training to allow them to be effective commanders. On top of that, clone units were regularly put through combat simulations, like what we see Domino Squad going through during the Clone Wars. On top of the cloning facilities, it's kind of understandable that Kamino also has sprawling medical facilities to treat ailments with the clones. Generally, this was where they were sent if anything went wrong with their inhibitor chips, which we do see happen once near the end of the war. But with all the use that Kamino had during the war, a lot of it dried up basically the moment the war ended. With the Separatists ultimately defeated, the Jedi vanquished from the galaxy, and the Galactic Empire replacing the Galactic Republic, the Kaminoans found their largest customer, the Grand Army of the Republic, suddenly didn't exist anymore. The clone troopers were still serving the Galactic Empire, but the Empire was refusing to honor the contracts they had with Kamino. This caused serious concern within Topoka City, which quickly fell under Imperial occupation. When the Empire ultimately began initiating Project War Mantle to replace the clones, the Kaminoans were not a fan of that project, understandably. And when this became more apparent, the Empire cracked down even harder. Ultimately, the Empire would withdraw their clones from Topoka City on Kamino, and after arresting or executing any leadership on the planet that opposed the Empire, level Topoka City with a fleet of Venator-class Star Destroyers. It was a poignant moment at the end of the last episode of The Bad Batch, watching Kamino, this planet that we've seen for years, this planet that's been very central to Star Wars since Attack of the Clones, be basically leveled. Seeing it abandoned and basically empty and then set ablaze was kind of an emotional moment. I remember growing up with the Clone Wars TV show and Attack of the Clones, so seeing this icon of my childhood burn was, well, it was as poignant as the show writers clearly intended it to be. Still, Kamino and Topoka City have a very long and interesting history. One of the most interesting points in that history is the Battle of Kamino. And if you'd like to learn more about that, I actually have an entire video on that, and I'll leave a link to that video up here. And then why don't you let me know down in the comments whether or not you were satisfied with how Topoka City met its end. Would you have liked to see the city continue on as an Imperial cloning facility, or 
do you think this is a fitting conclusion for such an important location? And if you have anything you'd like to see me cover from Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.